All right, Hotep, how's everybody doing? Hey, this is Michael M. Hotep, founder of the African History Network, host of the African History Network show. I'm a talk show host, researcher, lecturer, and writer. All right, it's uh, Saturday, April 20th, 2019. Hope everybody's doing well today. Okay, so I wanted to talk about uh, this story and we'll post the, uh, we'll pin the information for uh, this broadcast on our Facebook page. Okay, everybody share this broadcast on your Facebook page. Invite your friends to tune in also. Okay, so I want to talk about this uh, story. Blacknews.com has a good story about uh, CEO and serial entrepreneur Jasmine Truesdale. Uh, and uh, News1.com has an article, Huffington Post as well. But she has created a um, comic book company, Aza Comics, Aza Comics. And she's created some um, female superheroes, multicultural female superheroes. And it's a superhero group called The Keepers. And it's led by a um, woman of African descent who has locks, who kicks butt, okay? Um, and the superhero's name is Kayla. She's the leader of the Keepers, and this is the most popular superhero in uh, the group, all right? So this is a fantastic story, and we know with the popularity of Black Panther, which came out in February 2018, um, and we know that uh, Avengers Infinity War is coming out soon also. Black Panther will be back in in, uh, in in that movie, we see a huge demand for African American comic books as well. African American superheroes and comic books. Okay, whether it's uh, it's Luke uh, Luke Cage, who used to be called Power Man. Uh, we know it was on Netflix. It was canceled. I saw Cloak and Dagger is on one of the channels or streaming services. Uh, as well. So there's a huge demand for this, but also there's a demand for actual original African-American um, and uh, uh, comic book heroes, superheroes, and those of African descent. Okay. So let's take a look at this story. How's everybody doing? An African-American business owner, post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast, and uh, we'll let you know how you can advertise with the African History Network. Uh, also, email us at customer service at africanhistorynetwork.com, customer service at africanhistorynetwork.com. Okay, so if we look at the um, article from uh, news1.com, um, you know, when we look at Jasmine Tru uh, Truesdale, she said, I just asked women what they wanted to see, okay? Uh, she said, I wanted to create superheroes that truly empowered women of color, even the format of Aza's books cater to uh, the way women read, all right? So what she did was she grew up reading comic books, uh, Wonder Woman, um, you know, things like this. And she, she talks uh, excitedly about the time her father took her to the movies to see Batman star Michael Keaton. Who remembers like <laughs> Batman? Who remembers that? But there's like 89, okay, uh, Michael Keaton. Uh, but, at, but as time went on, she said that uh, she began to lose interest in comic books, okay? So she's about 31 uh, now at the time of the article from uh, – News1.com, it came out in 2017, she was 29. And she said, uh, when you're a kid, you are not looking at color. But as I got older, I could only name two black superheroes off the top of my head. You start to notice those things and then you lose interest, okay? And she lives in Durham, North Carolina. Uh, she said, we have many powerful women superheroes, but they are not, uh, they are not empowered is like an elephant tied to a chair. Many powerful women superheroes, but they are not empowered, okay? So what she did was she, she did uh, some market research and she found that the way women read and what they like in a comic book is, is different than 
what was on the market. So she created something called Novel Comics, Novel Comics, N-O-V-E-L, Novel Comics. Um, and in the article from uh, news1.com, uh, it talks about how, let's see, she began researching and testing ideas before developing the concept of her comic universe. She found that women wanted a universe with limitless, pow limitless possibilities and characters who look like them, okay? So uh, let me see, let me get to the part dealing with uh, novel comics. But with the, um, with Asa Comics, what it is is it's written like a novel and then it has uh, pictures, okay? It's written like a novel, then it has pictures. And doing her market research, she found that um, women didn't have time to follow a storyline month after month after month after month. Because, you know, I, I used to collect comic books when I was a kid. And the way they get you is at the end of the comic book is a cliffhanger, right? So then you have to buy the comic book the next month. This is how they get you, okay? <laughs> all right, so then you end up subscribing to the comic book. I remember I had subscriptions to the All-Star Squadron from DC Comics and Alpha Flight, things like this, because I got tired, my, my, because my father got tired of taking me back and forth to the comic book store every month. So he said, so, you know, I came up with the idea, wait, why don't I just get a subscription and it gets delivered to me, all right? But that's how they get you, okay? So in doing market research, she realized that the way women um, uh, read, their, their reading patterns are different than men, okay? So let's see here. Um, so Jasmine Truesdale also reimagined the comic book format to better fit women. The serial monthly comic style just did not fit women. Truesdale found through her research um, many found the story to be either too condensed in monthly style comic books or spread over too many months, okay? Many, uh, many women said they did not have the time to commit to getting a comic book every month. So uh, Jasmine Truesdale created what she calls novel comics, where most of the book is written, um, it, it, most of the book is the written story and the action scenes are illustrated. So that way is condensed into a novel. You can get more content in to satisfy the, uh, uh, the demand that women have in the, in the unique style in which they read, okay? But, and, and it's something unique uh, for women, so they'll gravitate to it, they're more likely to buy it, all right? So that's a good marketing, marketing strategy. Now, I never, I, never even, I never thought of something like that, right? I, I, never, I never realized that women read differently than men. I didn't know it existed, okay? When it comes to comic books. She said, people read the comics for the action scenes. I wanted to, I, I wanted to get heart and depth, so you just don't see them fighting but you get a sense of what they are about. And I remember when I was, you know, when I used to read comic books when I was a kid, you know, I'm flipping through the comic book, I'm looking at the action scenes. I'm looking at the action scenes first, the dialogue second. The dialogue wasn't that really important. I'm looking at the action scenes, okay? But the way women read comic books apparently is different. Okay, I didn't know this. So, <laughs> so, the Keepers, the Keepers is the name of this, uh, this superhero team she created, all right? The Keepers is imagined as a six volume set with origins as the first volume. Aza Comics, A-Z-A, also completed a children's book in December that depicts the five Keepers as children, okay? Um, due to popular demand, Jasmine Truesdale is creating a print edition of her of her first novel while working on the others okay i'm not sure if it's out now that came out th this article here is from 2017. there's one that just came out from blacknews.com um from a, a few days ago we'll go to that in just a second but this gives some background information so she did some type of market research she came up with a strategy that's different than um other things that are on the market because i never even heard of some i never even heard of, I never even realized 
that women read comic books differently. Okay, so I mean that's 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 ingenious right there. How's everybody doing? Um, share this broadcast on your Facebook page. Invite your friends to tune in also. Okay, this is Michael M. Hotel, founder of the African History Network, host of the African History Network show. Uh, we've got Goddess, uh, X Men are the best. Storm was my favorite. Yeah, I like Storm also from the X Men as well. Okay, African American business owners, post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast. We'll let you know how you can advertise with the African History Network. Uh, we have a special promotion uh, running this weekend, and uh, you get three months for the price of one. Okay, email us at customer service at africanhistorynetwork.com, customer service at africanhistorynetwork.com, and uh, we can get you up and running today. Let me post this uh, information here, and then we'll continue. Okay, so uh, let's go back to the article from news1.com. All right, so when it came time to look for an illustrator, okay, because she doesn't, um, she's not she's not the illustrator for the comic books, but she writes the storyline. Um, she said that when she was looking for an artist, she said she kept getting drawings of women that weren't quite, weren't, weren't quite right. She said, quote, I had top people in the industry sending me their stuff but they had no grasp of what black women looked like. They were sending me white women who were colored brown. Okay, they were sending, they were sending her images of white women colored brown, okay? And she said um, other drawings bordered on the pornographic side. Now, when, uh, when Jasmine at first shopped her idea to major comic book companies, they told her that the superhero of Kayla, who has the dreadlocks or locks, uh, would never sell. Now, Jasmine says executives wanted uh, another superhero that she created called Fina, F-E-N-N-A, who, was, uh, who is a, a, Briti a British super vixen with the power to manipulate emotions. They wanted Fina as the lead of this um, group of super heroines, okay, as opposed to Kayla, who is of African descent. She said that uh, people love Kayla's hair. They love that uh, another superhero, Adana, uh, is Indian, uh, is, is an Indian female mechanic living in Mumbai. And she said, I tried to put the characters in a position where they are outside the categorical boxes women are placed into. It's one thing to tell a woman she can do whatever, uh, it's one thing to tell a woman she can do whatever she wants, but it's another thing to actually, to actually show it. Okay, let me show you uh, this picture here. So here, here is one interesting image. And this is, <laughs> this is Kayla fighting against a, um, a Donald Trump, uh, a Donald Trump image. Let's see. Let's get the screen share going. Okay. Hopefully, y'all can hear all right. All right. Let's monitor this. Okay. How's everybody doing? And why isn't the sound coming up? All right. Can y'all hear me? Hold on. Let me see something here. What's going on? Okay. All right. Here we go. So it should come up. Okay. Yeah, it's coming up. All right. So here is um, here's Kayla fighting Donald Trump. Okay. <laughs> Kayla versus Trump. Aza Comics. All right. <laughs> uh, so that's 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 an interesting concept. And let's see here. Okay. All right, and then you have, uh, let's see. Okay, so here is uh, Jasmine Truesdale. Here's another picture of Well, So she's of African descent, she has the locks. She's from a um, another planet, actually. She lives in South Carolina, okay, in the uh, Gullah, uh, South Carolina, amongst the Gullah people in their area. So, 
when she was shopping the superheroes around to different comic book companies, they told her, oh, Kayla would never sell. And she has a T-shirt. Uh, you see her, she has Kayla on the T-shirt as well, okay? All right, so this is something very, very interesting. All right, okay. So let's continue here. And this is, uh, let's see here. Okay, so let's continue. Let's look at the article from uh, blacknews.com also. Okay, so the article from blacknews.com, that came out um, in April, April 2019. Let me see it here, April 10th, 2019. Black woman creates superhero universe for women of color celebrates Janet Jackson and Diana Ross. Because one of the things that she said was that um, it was some real women who inspired some of these characters also, okay? It was some real women who inspired uh, some of these characters. All right, let's see here. Okay, let me adjust the volume. All right, so, uh, let's see what we pick up here. All right, so with the rise of female superheroes, as that continues, and we see Captain Marvel uh, was number one for two or three weeks at the box office. Captain Marvel is coming back in uh, Avengers uh, 4 Endgame. I'll be there, man. I'll be there open the day to see Avengers 4. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> I'm going to do a video about Avengers 4 also. Um, Aza Comics stands out with this unique roster of multicultural characters and fan favorite uh, leading black superhero, Kayla, okay? Uh, so she talks about how she was told by publishers that Kayla was not marketable, but now she's Aza's most popular character, go figure, okay? She said that she wanted to showcase all these incredibly different women working together as a unit and kicking butt. The best way to inspire is by examples and Aza's, uh, Aza Comics characters uh, were inspired by real women of color who did incredible things, uh, Jasmine Truesdale said. So uh, she referred to uh, Janet Jackson and Diana Ross. She said they are the epitome of black girl magic. Of course, they would be the biggest influences on a universe of powerful women. It's a no brainer, okay? Um, now. Each female superhero, <clears throat> excuse me, each female superhero not only tackles supervillains, as we saw Kayla fighting against Trump, okay, <laughs> but also major issues happening with uh, women in various cultures, such as uh, sexual assault um, and, and things like this. She said, I want my characters to be a symbol of inspiration for women. I want women to be encouraged to speak up and speak and speak out about important issues and have the courage to fight their own battles. All right. So, I mean, here she is, she took an idea and, you know, I taught entrepreneurship for years, right? So she took an idea, she did market research. She found that she can make a product that's unique to what women want. And you know what she, I mean. What she's doing is fantastic. Now, as the uh, let's see here, I want to go back and talk about some of the other superheroes that she uh, created because the article from NewsOne.com lays this out. Okay, so if we look at Kayla, uh, the main heroine of the group, Kayla, is from the oldest realm, which is similar to the continent of Africa. Okay, um, the Asia comic universe contains several different realms. After a war, all the people in the various realms migrated to the Milky Way realm where Earth, where Earth, the only inhabitable planet, is located. The people from the different realms explain the ethnic diversity on Earth. Um, so Kayla lives in South Carolina, Gullah Sea Islands, amongst the Gullah Geechee people. And she can fly by manipulating force and can control energy so that she shoots out energy beams. 
She is trained in combat and gifted in languages. Uh, you have another superheroine, Adana, is a mechanic in Mumbai, India, who can fix anything and has super strength and morphing powers. You have another superheroine named uh, Ixchel, or Ixchel, I-X-C-H-E-L. She was raised in Bogota, Colombia, and has the power to manipulate electricity. She's a skilled hacker. She earned a PhD in genetics and an MD by age 18, okay? Uh, so, I mean, this is, she just created an entire universe. Just like you have the Marvel comic universe, you have the Asa comic universe as well. Okay, so uh, visit their website, azacomics.com, azacomics.com. They're also on uh, Facebook as well. I think it's Aza Comics on Facebook because I followed them on Facebook also. Paul says it sounds hot. Willie said, uh, hello from West Memphis, Arkansas. Okay, goddess, mother Orisha, uh, super queen, right on. I dig it. Okay. <laughs> and uh, check out their website, azacomics.com as well. So these are the, and, and what, what's interesting is that you can learn a lot about business by studying um, successful people and understand how did they go from concept you know, how did they go from concept to the actual creation? How were they able to do this? Blacknews.com has a lot of good articles about this. Blackenterprise.com as well has those also. Uh, African-American business owners, post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast. We'll let you know how you can advertise with the African History Network on the audio podcast of our show. So I've been doing the African History Network show for nine years. And uh, do a Sunday nights. I've been doing it three years on 9, 10 a.m. The Superstation WFDF here in Detroit. We take your 30 second to 60 second audio commercial. We put it into the audio podcast of our shows. We're on eight different podcast platforms: Blog Talk Radio, iTunes, Castbox, Acast, FM Player, Stitcher. Uh, each episode is thousands of listens. If you don't have a commercial, we can record one for you at no additional charge. We have a special promotion uh, this weekend. You get. Uh, three months for the price of one, three months for the price of one. Email us at customer service at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, customer service at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. For more information, we can get you up and running this weekend. Uh, also, we can get you up and running today. Also, uh, we can post uh, some of your information on our fan page as well. So we have a lot uh, we can help you with also, okay? Let's see here. Uh, Lorenda posted the link for y'all. Okay, thanks. Yeah, azacomics.com. And, you know, with the with the popularity of Black Panther, um, you have African-American comic book conventions that are taking place. I know in Detroit, Maya Crown Williams puts on a lot of them. The Mecca, uh, the Mecca Con is, is uh uh, it's the Af African American comic book conventions. I, I don't remember what that acronym actually stands for, but uh, I spoke at one of her conventions when it was at it was, when it was at Temple University in Philadelphia uh, back in 2016. And you have uh, more interest in African American comic book lines and African American superheroes created by us. Yeah, Marvel Comics, they're going to get their they're going to get their share. Right. But there's a desire for African-American comic book characters and characters of African descent created by us as well. When when the, the weekend that Black Panther debuted, I remember on AM Joy. On MSNBC, Joanne Reed show, she interviewed. Um, <clears throat> what's her name? Um, Erica Alexander, Erica Alexander, who uh, we saw as Cousin Pam on the Cosby show and Attorney Maxine Shaw on Living Single. And she has a comic book line of African and African-American superheroes. OK, so she was there showcasing her lines, showing the comic books, things like this. Right. So this is huge. And then also we know that because of the popularity of Black Panther, in 2018, you had the first Wakanda Con, the Wakanda Comic Book Convention, the Wakanda Con, 
that took place in Chicago and it's taking place again this year. Okay. So I got to email them my information because I may be there. I've just been so busy. I contacted them and they told me to email me my information, but I forgot to do it. But there's a huge demand for this, right? So what she's doing, what uh, Jasmine is doing is fantastic. All right, let me look at some more of your comments here. Um, let's see. We need more African mindsets to, to do more. We are the most innovative, uh, inventive people God has created, Elliot said. Okay, we have art. All right, Cafe Melanin. What's Cafe Melanin, Art? Which city are you in, Art? Let's see who else we have. Stella, Aza Comics, okay, yeah. Okay. All right, be sure to listen to the African History Network show Sundays, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Um, on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation, we broadcast here on Facebook Live as well. And we have uh, the shows archived on our website. I mean, uh, sorry, they're archived on our YouTube channel also. Michael M. Hotep, I M uh, I M H O T E P. You can listen to the audio podcast on our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Okay, just click on listen to podcast right on the home page. And uh, when they have holidays, like Easter holiday, we won't be on live, but I may do a broadcast uh, Sunday. I'm not sure. I have to figure it out. But we'll re-air some episodes uh, here as well. So April 14th, I dealt with uh, on the show. We have it on our Facebook fan page, the African History Network. Click on videos. It's also on our YouTube channel. Uh, I dealt with Nipsey Hussle being honored in uh, by Representative Karen Bass in Congress in the House of Representatives. And I talked some about his memorial service, Celebration of Life. I dealt with uh, Georgetown University. In Georgetown University, the students voting to impose a fee of $27.20 on undergraduate students to go towards a fund to uh, benefit and help support the descendants of the 272 enslaved Africans that uh, the Jesuit priests at Georgetown sold in 1838 for $115,000 to benefit Georgetown, to save Georgetown. That's where the money went to, to save Georgetown. Georgetown was having uh, severe financial problems at that time. I also dealt with how, um, I talked some about reparations and how House Resolution 40, HR 40, reintroduced by Representative um, Sheila Jackson Lee of Texas, how that's gaining momentum. Okay, we talked about that as well. So go watch that uh, also. That's from um, April 14th. And then check out the one I did April 7th as well, because I went deep into the uh, issue of reparations and talked about legal arguments for reparations that separated the legal arguments from a lot of the other arguments. A lot of the arguments for reparations that are floating around are not legal arguments. Uh, so we have to understand the difference. All right. Okay, guys. So look, we're going to get out of here. African American business owners, email us uh, at uh, customer service at africanhistorynetwork.com. Also, if you like this type of information, you can donate to the African History Network paypal.me forward slash the AHN show, paypal.me, me forward slash the AHN show. It helps us keep doing the research, stay on the air, uh, finance the research, finance the uh, show, pay the bills, et cetera. And then you can also uh, register for the online courses that I teach. We have them all on demand. They're in the bundle pack, 10 course online bundle pack. It includes uh, ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school, ancient Kemet, which is uh, one of the original names for Egypt. Uh, the Moors and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school. That's a 14-hour, seven-session online course that I teach. It's all on demand. Watch at your own pace. Watch from around the world. That's on sale, $40, regularly $130. So we posted the link here. It's also at our website, africanhistorynetwork.com. African History Network, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. All right. All right, guys. Hey, look, we have to get out of here. 
Uh, remember, at the African History Network, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world because right now it's correct for wrong behavior. It's not over till we win. Wakanda forever. We'll talk to you next time. Peace.